where it's a nice and... Well, actually, not nice. It's a very gloomy and muggy night. This is, uh, is going to be a very late leg day. But feel very well rested. Took a nice long nap. Uh, kind of slacked on my fluid consumption today. So, I made sure that the pre-workout had a lot of fucking water in it. Legs, I always do a bit extra caffeine. So I did um, two scoops of the hostility and then two scoops of the bloodshot. I can already feel my cheeks getting hit with some beta alanine. That's typically my cue that some stuff is moving around on my insides. My blood vessels are going to start dilating all my adrenal glands or whatever the hell else the caffeine does. I was about to throw the word epinephrine around, but I don't really, I don't know the science, whatever. All I know is, with that amount of caffeine and pump products, it's going to get me going. It's going to get me going to the extent where I'm going to say, well, you get the idea. So, plan for legs. <clears throat> Hamstrings, I think you could guess. Hamstring curls, laying curls, seated curls. Uh, that's pretty much it. Quads, I am going to try to change up. There's a couple of machines here, which I haven't used before. Um, there's a few leg presses, which I think are kind of interesting. I don't really love the, um, like, your typical sled leg press, you know, where the weight is just moving up and down on an angle. I've tried them. On the last leg day, I tried to warm up a set, and I just, I don't love it. I, it, it now, it may have just been that machine, but for me, not only do I not usually love the way it feels, usually I get a lot of glutes involved, um, and I mean, that's kind of the worst part, but then I feel like I'm going to, I feel like my stomach is going to explode at the bottom of every rep because my quads are running into my midsection, you know, so it's just, it, let's just say it hasn't really interested me as of late, but there is one here that looks a little different. It's kind of like a... It's not a sled. It's more of like a pendulum. So you sit here, the weight is here, and it kind of moves up and down like that. We'll just look at it later. But that's kind of interesting to me. And I definitely... This is one thing I'm trying to work on for this bulk. Or just in general. Obviously, all the time I want to improve my training. Because I want to make sure I'm getting as good of a muscle building stimulus in my lifts as possible. So that... Once the lift is done, all I have to focus on is getting my meals down. Right. The last thing you want to do is leave gains on the table. So I think I've been taking it a little bit easy in a way. I've been doing a lot of leg extensions and not as much pressing as I should be doing. Or at least as I think I should be doing. You know, let's say I actually get into a lot more pressing and then don't really notice any anything extra results-wise, then I'm sure maybe I'll just rebound and go back to leg extensions. But... <sighs> so, I'm definitely going to warm up with leg extensions for quads. This is something that I found out um, maybe half a year ago, a little bit less, uh, is that I love pressing once I've already got a quad pump. Um, in my mind, I kind of had a... Um, well, this was my mentality when it came to pressing. For me, when I start quads, I want to go as heavy as possible. That's my thought process. So that means I don't want to waste any energy on leg extensions. I want to get straight into heavy squats or heavy whatever. But after two or three or even four good sets of leg extensions, I maybe it's just the nature of the musculature or whatever. But my... Uh, or something about slow twitch, fast twitch, whatever. But I can squat pretty much just as heavy as I can fresh with a quad pump. Maybe not just as heavy, probably a little bit lighter, but it feels much better. It's just kind of, uh, yeah, it's almost like having a quad pump while pressing. You know, it just gives you an extra level of cushion. I like it with time. So that's one thing I have been changing. So whether or not I do all leg extensions or all, or try to bias a bit more pressing, right? Him, uh, blah, blah, blah. I just had a little, uh, 
Well, great fart. Leg extensions is always first. So once hamstrings is done, and hamstrings might be kind of quick. Um, well, we'll see. Leg hamstring curls until I feel satisfied. But once I finish my two little or three sets of leg extensions, then I kind of want to bounce around and try some new stuff. So in terms of pressing, there's obviously that leg press that looks interesting. There is uh, a mono lift. I almost forgot the, the name of that. So that's cool for me because in a typical squat rack, the, the J hooks where the bar actually rests on the rack, it's right where I want my hands to be on the bar. So once you kind of get big enough, you should definitely be stretching out your shoulders and your chest so that you can get into a good squat position. That's something I've been slacking on. So it takes a little bit to, for me to actually get loose enough to get under, a, under the bar for squats. So I like a very wide grip. And with the monolift, you can put the hooks real narrow so I can grab way outside of the bar like I like. And uh, I'll have to see if I need to adjust it, but there's you know one of those fancy power lifter straps that goes all the way through the bar. So if I do fail a set of squats, I don't have to worry about getting smushed. But, oh yeah, and then there's a belt squat. I have never used a belt squat apart from just kind of, well, I guess I have used it for RDLs once, which I did not really care for. But I think the belt squat might be kind of interesting too. Uh, so I guess we'll really just have to see. Quads, I, uh, this is kind of, I'm sort of going into this lift with a bit more of an open mind than usual. Like, obviously, for every lift, be it chest, back, or arms, I kind of wait until I get into the gym to decide what I want to do. Like, sort of getting in, warming up, seeing what's available, that's usually what tells me, okay, I want to do this, then maybe some of this, and then this, and then finish with this, and then done. But for the most part, that always follow, that always uh, that always follows a basic framework of what I want the lift to look like. I mean, arms is pretty basic. Chest, no matter what kind of movements I do, it's usually pressing first, followed by flies. Uh, back, I mean, just a combination of rows and pull downs and pullovers or whatever. But with quads, I'm really just going to have to see what looks good. <sighs> I'm waiting for the 500 or so milligrams of caffeine to smack me in the face. But. No matter what I end up doing, leg press or squat or belt squat and sissy squats, what do you think? Is there going to be a good leg pump at the end of it, which is going to make me say, yippee? I can almost guarantee it. Barring, man, I don't know. I don't know what could stop this leg pump. I'd have to get struck by lightning on the, on the walk into the gym, which... Just looking up at the sky, I don't think that's happening. So let's uh, let's just get in there, get started. I uh, I'm 97% sure it's going to be empty, just because it's so late. Uh, I call this irresponsibly late, but I didn't really feel like going in earlier. I kind of took a nap, so that's one thing I'm a little bit spoiled by. I'm not back at school yet, so I can be a little bit flexible with my uh, with my sleep schedule. But that is about to change. Ugh. I don't even want to think about it. So let's uh, let's just save that for later. But let's get in there. All right. So after gradually increasing weight, plus warming up my adductors, I'm now ready for the stack. So I wouldn't want to go so heavy that I couldn't do at least five or six reps with complete range of motion. But the full stack on the seated hamstring curl, I guess it depends on the machine, but this one's pretty good. So I think a couple here, just straight up heavy sets, burn out with a little bit of partials. Honestly, I'll probably just do a few here, a few laying, and then get quads going. Hamstrings is a, it's a pretty simple approach, I think. I just go nuts. After five sets of hard hamstring curls, you should be pretty pumped. Uh, 
more just like that. One more like that, and then some lighter lane curl sets. That's a good one. Oh my God. I might only need one set of lane curls. My hamstrings are already fucking completely destroyed. Oh. Well, let's take a breather and get over there. All right, not the whole stack. After, <laughs> after those sets with the stack, this is fucking too heavy. So a bit lighter, only three quarter. And this first set, I'm just gonna kinda go nuts, really throw the weight around. For me, I mean look, I said this yesterday in arms. You can do light, slow, controlled squeezing sets. I think if I did half the stack, or even less, maybe even like, I could probably get a good set out of the 65 pounds. Real slow, hard squeeze, slow down, good stretch. All well and good. A hard set is a hard set, regardless of weight. But, I just like doing kinda nasty sets, real just fucking throw the weight around. I don't know, I almost, something about it. I, I, it's hard for me to even describe, but this one will be kind of nasty. Throw it around until I burn out. And then the last set, I might go a bit lighter and squeeze just to kind of change it up. Because if I do all really heavy sets, whatever kind of special stimulus a light squeezing set gets you, emphasizing that burning sensation, I might be missing out on a little. But. Sometimes I like doing light hamstrings and sometimes I like going crazy heavy like today. Doing an even mix, that's what I really stand behind. You know, for every max out eight rep set of bench where you need a spot or else the weight is gonna crush you, you should have a set of lighter, I don't know, cable press where you really squeeze and just get a crazy burn. That's not like a cut and dry rule, but you get what I'm saying. So let's, uh, let's go nuts here. Okay. <sighs> All right. I may have overestimated my strength. Whew. One more with 110, and then quads, the real hard part of the workout, begins. Oh, God. Okay. 
That was a good one. Ugh. Not my most intense looking set, but that was definitely the perfect finisher. Let's move over one machine. Yeah, leg extension started. This is my best hamstring pump in a while. Okay, plan for this set, single leg, uh, kind of just because I like single leg leg extension sets, especially since it's the first movement. I kind of feel like it's a little bit less taxing energy wise, because you gotta think, I mean, if you've ever done leg extensions, when you use both hands at once, you gotta sit here, hold yourself down, because you're lifting, you know, a ton of weight. So you're like bracing, it's kind of hard to breathe. You're doing both legs at once. I'll be out of fucking breath. Now, of course, I'm still gonna be huffing and puffing after single leg sets, but since I only have to counterbalance, you know, half the weight, I'm only using one leg at a time, I don't have to hold myself down so hard. That's usually why I like having a, uh, a weight belt around so I can strap myself into the seat and not have to worry about holding myself down at all. That's, um, that's my ideal situation. And honestly, I'm kind of curious why leg extensions don't have a belt built in. You know, if I were on the design team of X manufacturer company for a leg extension, I think you can guarantee a belt would be fucking onto it. But either way, this is kind of going to be a two portion set. So, you know, I'm going to get maybe five or no, no, more than that. Let's say 15 reps, pretty slow controlled. But then once I'm at that level of fatigue where I can't really get up anymore, I'm going to start getting a little more, um, let's just say rapid with the reps and try to burn out as quick as possible. So probably two of these, and then we can move on to something else. Or maybe three, it's whatever. No need to get specific yet. find some pressing to do. I'm torn between squats and leg press. First, I gotta catch my breath. Jesus. Kind of a tricky angle. Oh, sorry. Doing a solo talk. Now, so this is kind of a tricky angle to clip. Because if I put the camera in front, I mean, all these weights are just gonna block me. So I think we'll just go for a quick side shot. But... This is a machine I have yet to use. Of course, I've been doing warm-up sets, so I know um, this is gonna feel good. This is about as much weight as I think is reasonable. Uh, one thing that's kind of funky with this, though, I don't know if you've ever used an independently loaded leg press of any kind, even a sled, but I tried doing the reps both legs at once, and like 
one would come down quicker than the other and then I'm kind of wobbly. So I think these are gonna be single leg sets. And then the weight is heavy enough that I don't think there's gonna be much partials. This is gonna be like X number of reps and then there's gonna be a pretty distinct point of failure. Maybe a little bit of partials, maybe, but we'll see. Let me just pick a badass song and try to go crazy. I was getting a little bouncy at the bottom. Oh, there's a little rubber pad. And on those last few reps, I was kind of hitting it and it was giving me a little bit of assistance. I'll try to control that a little better on the next one. Well, let's throw another plate on and hit this shit again. So instead of all the right leg, then all the left, let's do five reps on the right, then five on the left, back and forth, back and forth until you know, pretty much failure. The nature of this machine, since it's on a pendulum, I don't know how much you know about like physics and torque, but you gotta think, if you've got a weight hanging from the ceiling, even if it's a thousand fucking pounds, if it's hanging straight from the ceiling, you can give it a pretty good push and it's just gonna fucking move. So that's sort of like how this is. The weight is just being hung off of these supports. So at the bottom, it's pretty light. You know, that first inch, it's not too much weight. Of course, with this many plates, it's still something, but it's not too crazy. It's getting heavier at the top. Uh, I feel like I was gonna say something else. That was pretty much it, but whatever. Let me pick a song, try to go good. Try to make this a good one, as always. <sighs> I think that's good. Ooh. Damn. Let's move on to something else. I like this movement a lot. It's kind of making my hamstrings feel a little tight though. Oh. Okay. I think 
Maybe squats. All right, I'm not sure I'm gonna get anything out of another set of leg extensions. Whew. My legs are fucking destroyed. And not quads specifically, of course my quads are cooked, but hamstrings almost got double work. I'm a little bit ashamed to say that I've never really been one to think of leg press for hamstring activation. Right, in my mind, there's direct hamstring work and then there's direct quad work. But I don't know, something about that angle on that leg press, dude, that was a complete fucking leg set. Hamstrings were firing and quads were firing. And luckily enough, no glutes, which that's my shit, man. I don't want to be hitting glutes. My butt's big enough as it is. Any, for the most part, dudes have this fat distribution. Usually stomach, back, kind of sides a little bit, and then the butt. So for me, to go from fully bulked to fully cut, there's a very large size differential in uh, what would you, what is this measurement? I know this is bust, this is waist. What would you call like maximum hip to booty radius? Who gives a shit? Either way, I'm trying to hit hamstrings and quads which I feel like I definitely did. So quads, honestly, I don't feel crazy pumped. That was kind of a long lift because I did take a while to warm up and get ready for those leg extensions. Or no, no, those uh, leg press sets. And same thing with, um, with that set of squats, right? I went through two plates, three plates, four plates, and then the real set. So not as rapid of a lift. That is something where I do kind of like sets which are a little bit less taxing on my whole body like leg extensions and leg curls because i can i mean those sets of leg curls even though they were two failure with the stack and i was like assisting myself on an extra 10 reps i was only resting for like a minute in between so even though it was a hard set it wasn't so systemically fatiguing whereas those sets of leg press and squats my whole body's out of it oh my goodness so quads, not insanely pumped. Honestly, not even too pumped at all, but they feel fucking, oh, dude. Even just fucking standing up, they're burning. So whew, ideally, the more of those leg press sets and squats I do, the better I'll get at them, right? Because even typical cardio, it's kind of a different beast coming in and doing a good leg day, so. I think as I do more of these more intense full body pressing days, I'll get better at adding more volume in as well. But there's definitely some quad action going on, even if they don't feel, you know, pumped up so crazy that they're going to pop. Oh, but hamstrings were truly the star of the fucking show, man. Oh. Let's see, can you see anything? Yeah. Typically with a hamstring pump, they really lose their definition. When I'm gonna be all cut up in probably, well, I don't know how long this bulk is gonna go on. Historically, it's gonna take a while before I go back into a calorie deficit. But uh, once I'm all trimmed up and lean, and I don't mean as lean as I am now, I mean like extra lean, then in the morning, if I flex in the mirror, and, you know, try to get my hamstrings going. There's some cool shit going on back there. There's different kinds of, like, insertions and, well, I guess that's really it, insertions. 
but when they're fully pumped up, they kind of just turn into a blob. So that's another kind of benefit of being trim and cutting. You get to see all sorts of funky striations and uh, I mean, just fucking cool shit. But you gotta remember, you, oh my goodness, you can't jump straight there, right? You gotta build this shit underneath a little bit of a layer of fat, at least if you're in a legit bulk. And then when you trim down, you really get to reveal it. So, dude, I'm not joking, my hamstrings are, I am gonna feel them tomorrow. Even when, when I was standing up out of those sets of leg press, even just like standing up really quick, they were like, it almost felt like I pulled something. So really I'm not saying that like a flex, I'm saying that like, I think I went too heavy too soon on that leg press. I probably should have eased into it because with movements that you haven't done before or that you haven't done for a while, even if the main body part that you're hitting is really warm and strong, like my quads, quad wise, those felt sweet. Quads felt good, good stretch, good squeeze, good everything. But the, uh, let's just call it the assistive muscles, adductors, hamstrings, glutes a little bit. Those may not be totally up to par if you haven't been really, you know, hitting them in that way. So honestly, I think I'm just kind of glad I didn't tweak anything, but I'm probably just gonna drink a little bit of my Gatorade for a little bit, catch my breath. Then we can get in the car and get out of here. Oh my God, that was a good one. Okay, before we get into the leg day speech, I was kind of thinking about this on my walk into the gym. I, I think I saw a TikTok or something that kind of got me hyped up. There are, there are a certain, there's a few steps, a few different stages of self-belief, which will actually let you turn into a freak. Now, of course, it doesn't have to be lifting. This could be whatever. You, know, you want to be a goddamn pro chess player. Whatever. This kind of shit applies to everything. Right. Initial stage is interest, hope. Right. Oh, that looks pretty cool. You know, maybe one of your buddies shows you a lifting video, or you start to kind of get the itch to. Of course, I'm going to be. I'm going to talk about this in a gym context. Uh, but you know, for whatever reason, you get the itch like, oh. Yeah, I want to. I want to get kind of big. Yeah, that'd be sweet. You know, there's no details yet. There's no plan. Just kind of a distant idea. It's like, yeah, that'd be cool, dude. Yeah, look, these guys are having fucking fun, man. I want to do some of that. Yeah, fuck yeah, that's sick, right? Right. That's the hope stage. Now, the majority of people give up there. They don't even go to the gym. They don't even talk to their buddies. Uh, they don't even watch a couple of like tutorial videos on how to do this shit and it just ends there It's, it's like they're scrolling on their phone. Oh, yeah, that could be cool. It'd be sick if I was jacked Swipe young Sheldon meme <laughs> and, that, and then that's the end of it the little bit of hope in their mind just it flutters off into the universe gone forever or maybe it comes back uh, but, if you don't act on it, it may as well have never happened, right? So that's the hope stage. And then I would say next is the prospecting stage, right? The prospecting stage. So this is where that little bit of hope was enough for you to say, I want to try this shit. Look up on Planet Fitness, a free day pass. You send them, your, send them the email, they give you a little QR code. You don't even have to pay for this shit. And then you roll up, scan it, you're good. Maybe watch them. Um, Watch, copy a Chris Bumstead back day video. Copy anybody who you think is cool. You're like, oh, that's sick. Or watch some, uh, you know, watch some science-based dudes because they really get into the nitty-gritty details of like how to do specific movements. You know, we've all been there. We've all watched hours upon hours of, you know, Athlean X and Jeff Nippard and so and so else. Because if you've never lifted before, you don't know how to really squeeze your triceps on a push down or, you know, really. You want to like twist your hand just like this on a bicep curl, you know I know that's not usually the kind of stuff I'm hyping up, but as a beginner Knowledge is absolutely number one value or is at number one value. It's super valuable, right? So to go from never doing any lifts before 
to having a basic grasp of how to do this shit, a pretty good idea of what your form should look like, stuff like that, sweet. You get in the gym, you have one of your buddies, or maybe you make friends in the gym, and you kind of have them show you the ropes a little bit, you know? Uh, don't, uh, maybe don't go up to every person you see and, like, nag them, like, how do you do this? But you get what I'm saying, you know? Ease into it. And then, after long enough in the prospecting stage, where you haven't gotten any results yet, you haven't actually, you know, gotten in a uh, return on your investment yet, after a few months of that, you're going to notice that you've made some gains. And honestly, if you've been lifting pretty hard, you've been eating your protein, maybe you started taking a men's multivitamin or a women's multivitamin. I, I know there's a couple of you floating around. You get a good amount of sleep, right? And you're training hard. Three months from beginner to, well, three months in, you can look pretty substantially different. You're the most susceptible to gains in that period of time. So after that prospecting stage, probably a few people got cut. A few people did it for a few weeks. Uh, I don't have time for this. Or uh, for whatever reason, they're like, yeah, I'm done with this. You know. So the filter has taken a few more people out. But once that prospecting stage pays off and you realize, like, holy shit, I've actually got kind of an arm pump. Right? You're going to be the first to notice this kind of stuff, too. Um, I don't want you to get too worried about body dysmorphia, right? Just keep a level head about that kind of stuff. But you're going to notice when your form is just a little bigger. You're going to see when you first start to get that one big bicep vein. Right? That's, a, that's a pretty badass milestone, man. So once you start seeing that, then that's going to trickle into your mind and you're going to say, oh, shit. All right, let's, let's shift into second. Let's go harder. Same thing, you're gonna keep training hard. That is if you, you know, like the results that you're getting. I guess if you do three months of training, you see that you're getting bigger, and you say, eh, who gives a shit? Whatever, right, move on. But more likely than not, you're gonna see that, and just instinctually, in the most primal fibers of your being, you're gonna say, oh shit big strong muscles sick and you're gonna keep going after it, you know so once that prospecting stage is over that's when you kind of go from you know grinding just investing to actually starting to see some payments roll back out to seeing some dividends and you're like okay let's keep going right you really lock in you start working on your split a little bit more you start watching different sort of training videos and different styles and watching different lifters and learn about this shit a little more and not even like in a studying based way right if you actually do get genuinely interested in this kind of stuff you could watch hours of lifting videos and sure you're learning but you really just feel like you're you know watching a cool video right so once that starts there's really nothing stopping you, you know so if you're in that early stage try to just hold out Hold out a little bit longer, you know. The people who quit before they make it big, well, not even make it big, but just make any kind of results or get any kind of thing that they want in life, more people quit on the way up than they do. I totally forgot what I was going to say. You get what I'm saying, right? So X number of people have that kind of hope in their mind, like, oh, yeah, that'd be cool. Never act on it. The few people that do maybe do it for a little while and they say they, they get tired or busy or they can't keep up with it or whatever but then the people that make it through that second funnel and actually seeing gains and results they're locked in man it's like a fucking cult you know and some people want to drink the kool-aid and some people won't i guess that's your deal but that's kind of how i feel about there so i feel like i, I had some kind of conclusion i was thinking about but, oh, oh yeah, I was going to say, so, eh, eh, this is kind of a half-baked thought, but basic idea which you could take away from that is everybody wants it, right? We've all heard this shit. Everyone wants it, right? If any, if you gave somebody, I, I feel like I just said this analogy, maybe even in yesterday's video, so if this is on repeat, whoops, but 
if you gave somebody a fucking magic button or a gold I, uh, I'm just gonna repeat it verbatim if you gave somebody a golden shaker cup right and they rub it three times and a, a genie pops out and tells them do you want to be huge do you want to be jacked how many people are gonna say no easily the majority of dudes are gonna go you're goddamn right I do and then you know, their shirt blows off because they just got an extra 40 pounds of mass right so that's, I feel pretty confident saying that, right? That's the situation. But right, when you switch it from an instant gratification, just like a bestowing upon to, okay, well, you've got to put in so-and-so amount of hours for so-and-so amount of years, and then you got it. Now, once you add that in, once you smack them in the face with reality, then most people who kind of just have that want they take a few steps back and they go, oh, oh man, well, that sounds kind of crazy. Now I'm not that interested. And whatever, man, that's their fucking, that's their primary directive. So hopefully that's not you. I know that's not you. I know you're on track to being a goddamn beast. So I think that's enough of my little chat there. Maybe not, not really a message, but kind of just a little observation on the, on the state of ship. So, it's uh, just by starting, just by sticking to it, you are separating yourself from the herd in a major way. But enough of that, enough of that. Legs cooked, even just sitting here flexing my hamstrings. They're on fucking fire. I think I should probably take a Epsom salt bath. Actually, I think I definitely should. So that's probably the plan when I get home. That combined with, um, I don't know what I want to eat. I'll find something. Uh, I don't think there's any steaks left. I might, oh my goodness. It's kind of a half hiccup. I might just end up doing, I don't know. I'll see. 50 grams of protein, maybe 30 or 40 grams of fat, and then like 200 grams of carbs. That's just about what I've got left to hit my little 5K goal. So wherever that's got to come from, that's where it's going to come from, man. Be it a protein shake, some ice cream, and maybe uh, whatever. I don't even know. I'll have to get in the kitchen and see what I've got available. I've almost got the same approach in terms of eating as I do in the gym. I gotta wait until I actually see what's available and then make my decision. So I think that's all I got, man. Badass leg day. Leg days will, they are gonna increase in quad volume. Oh man, I think I might have to, I don't know. I'm torn. So this is kind of what I'm going through in my mind. I feel like I'm kind of, well, I'm definitely spending a lot of energy on those hamstring curls. And then by the time I'm on to quads, I'm, you know, I'm not gassed, but I'm definitely kind of you know, fatigued. So that sort of makes me want to separate quads and hamstrings just so I can really hit quads with everything I've got. Because I th my hamstrings are not too bad. I'd say my quads are a bit further behind compared to my whole build than my hamstrings are. So I think I'm gonna chill. I might chill on hamstrings a little bit. I might reduce the volume on hamstrings. I know I'm kind of, I usually hate on people that do less volume on hamstrings than quads, but if I end up doing those leg presses, well, those leg presses and maybe a few other different kind of pressing movements, if my hamstrings come into play as much as that, or even as little as that, then you know, three good sets of hamstring curls first, and then those pressing movements, my hamstrings are still going to be fully cooked at the end of it. So I think I might be better off spending more energy on quads and really getting bigger up here on the front. So that's sort of my mental state. That's kind of my thought process so far with how I want to change... Uh, I want to change quads up, but plan for tomorrow, cardio, 
I got a ton of laundry to fold, like a total fool. Food. Pack up some shit before I go back to school. And chest later. So, chest still not absolutely crazy yet, weight-wise. I'm going to keep easing into it for a little bit. But I could, eh, I might do some bench. We'll see. We'll see. I got to see how it feels. The last thing I want to do is jump straight to, like, three plates on incline or something. And, you know, get kind of comfortable with the weight and say, oh, this feels pretty good. Ooh. <laughs> you know, re-hurt myself. So, be, uh, be very cautious whenever you tweak something. Because retweaking it is just going to set you back even further than the initial injury. Don't forget it. So I think that's all I got, man. I'm ready for bed after I get this food in my system. and eh, It's already kind of late. I'll just fucking take a shower. You know what I... Oh, man. I kind of want a fucking hot tub. Not like a big-ass plastic one, but you can get a little, like, inflatable one. It's very interesting. Because they, they're big, man. They could fit four people in them. So, I'll, eh, I'll think about it. That'd be fun. A hot tub talk post-workout. We'll see. We will see. But hopefully you hit your macros. Got a good night's rest. Did your cardio. Trained hard. Now you just get to chill. So make sure to repeat that process for well, infinity. And uh, try to improve your intensity over time as well. That's all I got. So I'll see you next time.